Ken Okazaki, and I'm going to be talking on the Popcorn Show, and we're going to be talking all about video marketing. I'm going to go really deep with the techniques I've used to help my clients get amazing results in sales. So what you're going to want to do is, if you're interested in using video and literally just starting with your phone and figuring out how to structure your content to get people to watch, how to get people to watch to the end, make a micro commitment, and then how to get sales without ever annoying people with your ads. That's what we're gonna be talking about. You wanna see this, and also for me to answer your questions around anything you have about video marketing, then I've made a ton of videos around that, and I've also helped my clients and my businesses make a ton of money. So click the link below, get registered, and I hope to see you at Popcorn. According to Buffer, companies that include videos in their marketing campaigns have 27% higher click-through rates and 34% higher conversion rates than companies not using such strategies. So if you're asking yourself if investing in video marketing is worth it or not, then we say, yes, it's totally worth it. Just not because it's the latest trend, but also as videos are a very versatile and profitable digital marketing tool. Let's take a look at the top six reasons that your business needs to start video marketing. Google loves videos. As Google is the parent organization behind YouTube, it directly affects your website's overall search engine ranking. According to Movely, if a video is embedded in your website, then your chances to be on top of search results increase by more than 50 times. Increases conversions along with ROI. First, and the foremost benefit of using a video, is that it will increase your sales. Many studies have shown that more than 70% of users who watched a video related to a product simultaneously bought it. Not only this, more than 80% of businesses say that using videos as a marketing tool has helped them get good returns on their investments. Generates audience engagement. As more than one third of online activity involves watching videos, using videos for your business is more likely to engage a lot of new customers. So if you're thinking about launching a new product or service, video marketing can be highly beneficial, as more than 80% of consumers prefer watching a video about a product rather than reading about it. Valuable information is easily explained. With so many websites and products being launched every day, using only content to provide information about a product can be quite competitive and boring. However, according to a study conducted by Forrester, one minute of video is worth 1.8 million words. Adding a video to your landing pages can thus help you attract a bigger audience. Dropbox, when first launched, seemed to be a foreign concept to many. However, when they explained their process using a video, their users increased by many folds. Encourages social shares. More than 40% of internet users watch more than an hour of Facebook or YouTube videos a week. More than 60% of internet users say they're more likely to share a brand video with their friends in comparison to brands that don't have any videos. So, having a video can definitely help your brand go viral. Engages more smartphone users. Given the growth of m-commerce, consumers are more likely to engage in videos a lot more than reading blogs and articles about the same thing. It's been shown that more than 50% of smartphone users prefer companies with mobile sites or apps that provide instructional video content. This is big as there's so much that video marketing can do for your business growth.
I can't hear you, Amin. Yeah, good morning. <laughs> <laughs> did you just mute yourself? Yeah, I did. I kind of like, uh, I'm taking over for Pauline to use StreamYard today. So everything is a bit like, it's a new lesson for me today. How are you doing? Okay, no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, so welcome everybody. So nice to see you guys. Um, welcome yep. to another episode of Just Langa Podcast with Popcorn. Now, yep. um, I wasn't around last week. What happened? Did you guys do okay or did you guys like? We, we, we were okay. We were okay, right? We were doing just fine. Everything was smooth. Everything was uh, doing good. Uh, Pauline, I think Pauline's going to start taking over after this. Uh. All right. Oh, because you Maybe suck, is it? Yeah, I think I suck at it. So next week, you're just going to start <laughs> getting Pauline in. <laughs> and then we'll see what you can do there. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, it's a bit flustered. So I'm just checking. But, you know, I heard from people that it's a bit weird not to see me because I talk a lot and I went missing because I was attending a training. But I yeah. think you guys love seeing Pauline. She was, it was supposed to be Pauline's debut. But somebody told me that Pauline uh -huh. only went on screen twice. <laughs> so if you guys want to see more of Pauline, please just, um, you know. Pauline. Pauline yeah. down here? <laughs> we want Pauline, you know, because we think she should come out more. And she's kind of actually quite funny, uh, but she wants to maintain yeah. macho, if you know what I mean, okay? So Definitely. that's Pauline. Uh, but yes, today, what are we talking about today? I mean, do you know? It's video, 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 so, right? Today, uh, today is all about video marketing. That's what we're going to be talking about, right? And okay. who's the best person to learn it from? Well, we've got the godfather of video marketing in the house, right? And um, exactly. I think this is our first international speaker, apart from Sujimi. He's tuning in live all the way from Japan, okay? Yeah, all the way from Japan, right? So okay. I'm excited. Yeah, I'm excited. so am I. Yeah. Okay, so without further ado, um, but why is video marketing important? I mean, if you can share the stats, about 82% of mobile traffic in 2020 is for video and 79% of consumers prefer watching video than reading about a product and customers are four times likely to watch a video about the product instead of reading about it. This is uh, mm -hmm. data by Forbes and shoppers who viewed video are 174% more likely to purchase the product than viewers who did not. So are you guys ready to learn all about video marketing? I'm yeah. ready to go. Uh, okay. Of course. I've been, I've been I've been testing stuff, so a lot of failed projects. So I want to learn from the Google himself today. That's all I wanted to do. Yeah, we don't have time to make mistakes as we learn from COVID nineteen. We just need to level exactly. up. So we've got a treat for you guys as well at the end of the show. We're gonna give you guys something really um, amazing, in my opinion. So you want to tune yeah. in for that. So without further ado, um, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Just Langa Show. I'm in intro video, please. Intro video, go. All right, welcome okay, back, Pop Corners. Yeah, thank you. Welcome I am back. Nina, and this is. And I'm Amin. All right, welcome, welcome to the Popcorns <laughs> Just Langa Show. Yeah. Okay, so today we're talking about video marketing, and there's little doubt that today the most engaging content that you can possibly create is video. But there's just too many salesy, scammy marketeers who are ruining the social media landscape. Right, Amin? Yep. Okay, exactly. um, right. so even in our industry, especially in our industry, suddenly during COVID-19, you see a lot of this cringy marketing guru ads coming out. I don't know about you, but I'm like cringing. But that is what today's session is all about. It's about helping you guys do personal branding, right? And to build trust uh, with your audience using video, okay? So, and we have the best person in the house today. We have the godfather of video marketing himself, uh, none other than Ken Okazaki. Now, again, before I introduce you guys, uh, I introduce you to the speaker. If at any time you guys have any questions, just feel free to list them in the comment section below and we'll get Ken to answer your questions, okay? Now, who is Ken? He is a director, video producer, speaker, and consultant. Uh, Ken is also the founder of Oz Media Global, right where he reveals to his clients the exact tricks and techniques that the world's top marketeers use to make their millions and adapts it for anyone ready to finally start making videos to get leads and sales online. Now, COVID-19, he helped rescue his clients by giving them the tools to get started, whether they're a beginner or advanced. All you need is a phone and a desire to implement it. Sounds good? Uh, Ken, welcome to the show. Thank you for hey, joining us. Hey, thanks so much for having me. Right. Appreciate it. 
I, okay. Yeah. Um, right. Now, if you've just tuned in, again, if you have any questions, just please put it in the comment section below. We'll get Ken to answer it. But first things yeah. first, Ken, can you share a little bit more about what you do and what are some of the things that you do with your clients so our audience can get a little perspective? Sure, I'd be happy to. Now, uh, <laughs> the title Godfather of Video Marketing, I'm not sure exactly where that came from, but I'm, there have been plenty of people doing it before me, just to be really clear. I'm not claiming to have invented it in any way. Um, but uh, basically, I have a video marketing agency, and that was created off the back of a of a large scale business seminar program I used to have. I used to do uh, you know several thousand people every uh, every month or so here in Japan, and uh, I I. I used to fill the seats. That means, you know, put butts in seats every single time using marketing. And the kind of marketing that worked best every time was video marketing. Now, after a few years, we were actually running the very largest business uh, seminars in Japan at the time. And uh, I, I didn't really enjoy it. And you know, I realized I, I got to the top of my, my niche of my industry and I didn't love it. So I got rid of the seminar business, but the part I did love was the video marketing part. So I kept that and that's what I do now. And a lot of the speakers who I brought to my stage, um, some prefer not to be named. I'll just say that you've definitely heard of them. Uh, I, I asked them, hey, would you like me to help you put bus in seats all over the world and not just in my events in Japan? And that's how I started my agency. And it's really all about how can you connect with people on a personal level, but at a large scale, and sell without pitching. That's that's the philosophy around what I do. And uh, any more details, I'd be happy to share if you have questions. Okay, sounds good. Now, talking about your agency, your your agency is actually called Oz Media Global, right? And it's yes. a very interesting name. How did you come up with the name? I think there's a story behind it that you can share <laughs> with our audience, right? Well, it's it's really simple. Um, you know, I, I really love uh, that movie. Uh, Wizard of Oz and Oz is after the Wizard of Oz who and he is really just a regular human being but what he understands is technology he understands technology to be able to influence an entire society of people just by pushing and pulling some levers and really magnifying his influence over an entire population and I think in the same way that anybody if they have the right tools and they do the right techniques in the right way they can influence the entire tribe their nation whatever you want to call it and you can become a huge influencer uh, both uh, and be successful financially and uh, you know the, with the impact you're gonna have in the world. You just have to know the right things. And that's what Oz is. Now, Oz Media Global, uh, I work globally and we do media, but also I really love how it just, uh, the acronym is OMG. So that that played a part in it. I wanna give people an OMG experience when they, when they work with me. So uh, it all kind of ties together. Right, okay, OMG, Oz. I love that. So what you're trying to say, is, what, what you're really saying is that anybody, if you have the right tools and the, basically everything right, you can actually be able to make a very good sales. You know, uh, when I say anybody, there's there's like there's a couple of requirements okay now recently there's <laughs> okay, been yeah there are a couple of requirements you know and not everybody qualifies recently there's been a, an invention that came out it's they're usually they're they're like rectangular and flat and they got these little uh black circles and it looks like this right see these it's rectangular and these little circles right these are called cameras and on mm -hmm. this side you'll see it's got like a little you know logo there that's called a, a, a internet signal if you've got that then you're qualified if you don't, okay, then, then you might have to wait and pick one of these things up. It's called it's called a phone, by the way. So okay. I think, yeah, anybody can if you've got some basic tech in your pocket. Okay, cool. That sounds re I, I think that's amazing because the advancement in technology and now everybody has this. In Malaysia, I can tell you, uh, there's we have 125% of people of the Malaysian population who have this, which means 25% of Malaysians have two phones. Or more, <laughs> or maybe fifty percent have three, and then <laughs> possibly. Okay, now um, can we talk about video marketing? Let's get some terms out so that everybody's clear. Video sure. marketing. What exactly do we mean by it, and mm. how is it different from other marketing strategies? And yeah, is I, it? Uh, yeah. Go ahead. Uh, is it more suitable to certain audiences, like B two C, B two B? Yeah, Share definitely. With us. So. The video marketing, you know, obviously it started with TV ads, you know, way back in the 50s when when that started and it's morphed into a lot more. Now, it used to be that everything was a one way conversation. You spend a whole bunch of money 
and uh, you get this fancy thing produced. And then you once once you hit go and you pay tons of money to get it produced and then tons of money to broadcast it, that, that's that's step one and two. And step three is, is this. You fold your fingers and pray to God that somebody buys, right? And th that third step is the part that makes me a little bit uncomfortable because you can't control that. You know, I have nothing against spirituality, but I think that there's a difference between predictability in business and spirituality, right? We've got to separate those just a little bit. And the way I look at video marketing today is that it's a real-time engagement machine where you can tap directly into your audience's mind, their deepest desires, and also their frustrations, and then use that to help them solve their problems even better, hopefully by working with you. Now, uh, if you don't mind, can I share my screen and just, just draw a diagram? And yes, how you I can. Go ahead. Perfect. Feel free oh. to use whatever you need to use. <laughs> OK, so. Um, you know, I think there's different types of business owners and some people really love to have a lot of structure. Now, when it comes to structure, what that means is you love uh, doing things, you know, very well, well, I'll get to this later, right? Some people love structure and then you got people who just run on a lot of inspiration, right? And there's not wrong or right, but what it is, is that uh, I think I'm getting cut off there. <laughs> All good. Uh, it's, it's not wrong or right, but it's just different types of personalities of business owners. And then you've got the type who are really introverted and you got the people who are extroverted. Now, again, not wrong or right. But what I want to highlight here is that most people, when you start out with video marketing, you're going to be in this zone right here. And the reason you're in this zone is because you do it when you feel like it, when you feel inspired to. Right. And you're a bit of an introvert. Maybe it's just your personality. Maybe it's just because you need to have a bit more experience. I see the logo right over my face here. There. Better. Okay. So, what we're going to do now is uh, look at, you know, where do you start and how can we really succeed? Now, a lot of people, they go up in this zone and they get really, really successful by uh, putting a lot of structure and getting really good at things like, you know, for example, copywriting, uh, maybe uh, website design, right? maybe automations and you know funnels there's a lot that can go into building a really successful business without ever having to put your face in front of people so if you want to be behind the scenes and you have tons of structure then that's going to work out super well now there's other businesses that go in this direction and they're super successful over here and the reason they're successful there is because when they get in front of people right when you get in front of someone and you just sincerely share your mission you you share your your uh your desire to help and people believe you and just that is enough to convince people to invest money to work with you so if you're in that zone then what you want to think about is uh you know like for example maybe you're a speaker and you you just need to get in front of people and inspire an audience. Maybe you go show up at networking events, right? And you just go and shake a lot of people's hands and people love you and they believe you and they want to invest in you. Now, as we know, this zone right here is not working out so well, especially right now. Speaking gigs, especially big venues, that's the first thing that went out when COVID, right? Networking events, not happening either. So what do we need to do? If you're in this zone, and I'm not sure how many people are watching yet, but just think to yourself, are you more of this A personality or more of this B personality? This is just a mental note. And if you can, uh, if you're watching live, just type it in the chat. Are you A or B? And either way, uh, if you're B, what you need to do is you need to move right up here into this zone. And this zone here is called, oops, that's the wrong color. It's called the video funnel, right? And what you want to do is start putting some structure behind your videos right the video funnel is basically everything you need to do to take your videos and actually make money out of it how can you take your personality how can you take your mission how can you take your purpose and add a bit of structure to it so that you can amplify that digitally and if you're in this zone over here then the reason you're going to want to go here is because you do super well with structure and if you understand what structure to use exactly what words to say in what order and how to get people to buy from you without pitching to them by using systems and frameworks then the video funnel is going to be perfect for you and that's exactly where you want to go so when you say what type of people like whether you're an a person whether you're a b person what you need to do is move up into here where there's a lot of structure and you're going to learn to even if you're not naturally an extrovert 
you can present yourself as somebody who is very, very social and who knows how to have a conversation with video. Does that answer your question for you? Oh, thank you so much for the answers. I see some Bs and As. There's both in there. Yeah, that's fantastic. I think you just kind of put everything with the structure so that we know where we need to go in the diagram. Because, you know, so what would you suggest, especially for people, I think it's A, they are here, they've got a lot of structure, mm -hmm. but they yep. they don't naturally talk like mm -hmm. me. Um, is it possible to kind of move them along towards the B, the high end? Especially Absolutely. if you're scared of talking in front of the camera and stuff yeah. like that, you know? You know, the main reason people don't start with video, and I, and if, uh, you know, over the last two years, we've made over 4,000 videos. I think we're almost 5,000 videos. And we just have a lot of data around what videos work and what don't, and also different types of personalities and different types of video. And one of the main reasons people don't start is because they don't know what to talk about. And they tried before, it didn't work super well. And they're also afraid that if they start putting themselves out there and start pitching and selling, then they're going to lose all their friends because everybody's going to see them as a, as a pitchy, scammy person. And that's the truth, actually. People are going to see you as a pitchy, scammy person. You're going to lose your friends. You'll probably make some new ones, other pitchy, scammy people. <laughs> but uh, those are really true. And that's the reason why you got to look at it differently. Now, yes, if you are the extrovert type person, you want to get in front of people, just smile, shake their hand, tell your story and convince them that you are a worthy investment or your business is worthy, then uh, all you need to do is put some structure behind it. Now, if you already love structure and you feel like an introvert, it's going to be super easy because you, you just need the right frameworks and the right structures, right? You need to yes. learn how to put this, the, uh, if you, Basically, if you life structure, it's so easy. You just follow the steps and you'll get the results. Simple. Okay. And this is how you work with your clients, right? Can you share a little bit like, um, because you know, there's high end products, there's low end. How do you work with your clients who um, might have different budgets, but mm -hmm. they still want the service? Do you cater to the smaller budget guys and the big budget guys? Yeah. So, you know, a little bit of a personal story. Um, you know, I've got uh, clients in Australia, US, a few in Malaysia, Singapore, Japan, and uh, I have local film crews that that do a lot of the, the local stuff for me. Uh, I'm, I'm always directing, but I have other people who help me with that. With COVID-19, and a lot of people, you know, the thing is we don't, it's, it's, there's a tendency of entrepreneurs to not share our uh, vulnerabilities, the things that are not going well. We always want to share what's going amazing, right? So mm -hmm. a little moment to be vulnerable here, my main agency business, uh, re strongly relies on my film crews flying around the world and me flying all over the world because uh -huh. people who are paying, you know, 50,000 US dollars plus to work with me, they want to see my face, right? And uh, so that agency part seriously took a, a downturn. And also, the, a lot of my clients, they're running live events. Live events were the first thing that got limited with COVID-19. Before restaurants, before anything else, they said, if it's more than 100 people together, then, you know, we can't do it. So... You know, my my clients typically put five to ten thousand people in a room. So obviously that had to stop or slow down. So that's when uh, I used to serve exclusively these high end clients, people who are crushing it. And uh, mm -hmm. you probably know a few of them, uh, people with, you know, really tall guy with big teeth and big hands uh, likes to walk on fire. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I've done uh, that, too. Yeah, you know, I, I don't name drop too much, but uh, in, because of NDAs, another guy who loves to write, you know, wear a 10X shirt everywhere, those kind of people, right? So I help promote their stuff. Um, it, it says 10 and an X next to it, that guy. Ooh, okay. <laughs> okay, so here's the thing. Since COVID-19, I realized that this whole time I've had a whole bunch of people asking if I could help them, but when they found out my prices, they're like, oh, I can't afford that. So I recently started a, a course where I actually teach all the marketing stuff. <laughs> Yeah, we're, we're a good example. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, exactly. So the, the marketing stuff that uh, uh, the things that I'm doing for them as an agency, I show you how to do it for yourself. And uh, one of the biggest questions I get is how does video marketing actually work? You know, like what what is it that's working? You know, Gary V, he always says, make more video, make more video, right? Uh, everybody out there says make more video. But what's the specific type of video for that's right for you. And that's the, the question um, that I think you're trying to answer. Is that right? Yeah. Yes, exactly. Because um, number one, there's so many videos out there. How do we mm -hmm. set ourselves apart from the competition? And number yeah. two, obviously it's not a one size fits all because mm -hmm. all of us are doing different businesses. We Can we really apply the same 
structure? Or maybe the right question is, what is the biggest challenge that business and individuals make when it comes to video? Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm going to share my screen here. And let me just explain the different types of video that work. Now, um, you know, there's there's different markets. And way over here, you got things that are very cheap, low dollar, you know, low cost. And then over here, we've got, let's just call this, you know, expensive, right? And, uh, you know, high price stuff. And uh, up here, we're going to say that, the, no, sorry, down here, I'll call this the understood zone, right? Where things are easily understood and don't need too much explaining. And up here, needs uh, education, right? Now, when we say needs education, you know, what's, what's going on here is that uh, a lot of times things, uh, for example, uh, a SaaS product or a uh, consulting or coaching or you know taxes those kind of things need a lot of education around it so there's I'm just gonna as I write this out I just want you to think about what zone you're in so I'm gonna put a b c and d here and if it's something that's very very cheap and it's easy to understand then we're talking about a price game right Places like Walmart. I'm not sure what the equivalent of Walmart in the in uh, Malaysia is, but let's just say Walmart. They 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 sell things that are easy to understand. As soon as you see it on the shelf, you think, "Do I need it? Do I not need it?" And they always offer the best prices. Now, other things are like you know, for example, the one dollar uh, store. Right? Again, everything's a dollar. You see it on the shelf. You make a quick decision: Do I want it or do I not want it? Now. That's one type of category, and that's what I call the A category. Now, the B category needs education, but it's still cheap. For example, right now, I am selling a $37 course, and this needs a bit of education. I show, I say, hey, would you like to know how to make video and uh, edit it using only your phone? And these videos use a certain formula. And it's a 90-second ad. People click it. They buy it. Super easy. So low cost and need some education. And maybe some things you know, like e-commerce, e e-commerce, maybe an iPhone case, where you can literally just say, hey, there's a little bit of education, but this is not a high cost. So just go ahead and buy it. So you can just watch the video and buy it. People make a quick decision. So that's the B zone. Now, let's go down to the D zone, where things are expensive but understood. Now, what's going to go on here is brands. This is where brands come, like Apple. You know, By the way, Everything Apple makes, I buy. I have one of everything. Like if you look around, it's I'm a bit of a, I'm a little bit crazy. My wife hates it, <laughs> but uh, if you have a strong brand, then it's understood and it's expensive. Apple could just flash their logo and say, you know, iPhone 12, iPhone 13, iPhone 14. People will line up to buy it. Uh, you know, oops, sorry, wrong one. Brands like you know Chanel, right? Is there any good reason you should ever buy Chanel? No. Do people buy it anyway? Yes. Is it understood? Yes. No. A Lamborghini. You know, these are all uh, examples of brands that are crushing it so well that people pay a high price, and it's pretty easily understood. So what I want you to look at right now is you got to realize that right here, this zone and this zone, is the the two types of products. If you're in these categories, then all you have to do is shoot an ad that says buy this, and people will buy it and you can make a profit. If you have a very strong brand, that's easily understood, or if you have a low cost item that needs some education, then you could just straight up shoot an ad, say, please buy it, here's why you should buy it, and people will buy it. Now, um, here's what is interesting. A lot of people oh, need to sell something that needs education and is high cost. Now, this is gonna be, for example, coaching, right? This is gonna be, uh, consulting and for example SaaS products or uh, let's just say you know tax or attorneys right and these this is the zone right here that's the sweet spot where I have clients and I'm not exaggerating here who are charging you know upwards from thirty thousand dollars per year on retainer for group coaching where people don't even get one-on-one -on -one time but if you can educate people properly in the right way then you can absolutely sell coaching, consulting, SaaS, tax, uh, if you're a doctor, for example, that falls under this category. So I'm going to leave this up for just a second. Take a minute and just type into the chat, what are you? Are you A, B, C, or D? Or more importantly, where do you know you need to be? What zone do you need to be in?
and I'll leave this up here for a second. And uh, Nina, are you still there? I'm still. I, I'm like, if you cannot see me, my my mouth is on the floor. Oh, there we are. There. Kind of thing. <laughs> I'm resizing it. Perfect. Okay. Um, Pauline and Amin. Uh, Amin. There. Yeah. Amin's gone missing. Uh oh. Okay. Uh oh. It's okay. So Pauline, maybe you can type in the comment section where we are in the quadrant. Something to think about. Uh, Amin's coming in. I'm back. <laughs> right. Uh... <laughs> I, I'm just like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I was like, oh. <laughs> okay, I see a couple of C's. Hyrule, yeah, Marilyn, yeah. thanks so much for, for engaging, guys. When you're when you're engaging, yeah. that's amazing. Joanne, I, Zone B. Yep. I'm a C. Joanne I, I think is Amin's wife. Oh, okay. <laughs> Joanne, when you're replying, is it for popcorn or is it for you personally? <laughs> Joanne, you're getting called out. They know who you yeah. are. <laughs> um, could somebody be kind of like D to C ish because there's a Facebook user who's saying Absolutely. they are D, yeah, yeah. so they could be I, a combination. I mean, I, yeah, you want to you want to interact with some of these people right now? Uh, I think there's some question as well. Um, there is the uh, question, but I'd like to answer that later. Is that okay? okay. Because we do cool. have that question. Yeah. Yeah. Hi everybody! Thank you so much. So if you guys have, oh Joanne, Joanne, you should be asking for popcorn lah. <laughs> okay, thank you so much for tuning in. Um, let's um. I'm going to handle the the big overview picture and then we're going to go into detail of a video, okay? Now, mm. you also have this thing. Do, does every business need video marketing, would you say? Um, look, here's the thing. I haven't found one yet that, that wouldn't do better with it. Now, okay. th the big question is this. The willingness to actually do the work and play the long game is the question. It's not about will video work for you. It's will you work for video, right? Mm -hmm. Like for example, it's it's like weight loss. You know, I, I could give you the very best workout plan and the very best meal plan, and you could do it perfectly for a week and then stop. Will you get results? No. You'll go no. to exactly two weeks later. You'll be well. You'll be worse because you'll be sore on top of it, right? And also, you're gonna have this memory of I tried and it didn't work. So the real question with video is, are you willing to play the long game? Are you willing to actually continue doing this consistently, build a loyal audience, build trust in the audience, and then reap the really, really, really big rewards? And uh, that's the question. I know absolutely video will work, but will you work for it is the question. OK, will you work for it? Could you share with us what is it about video? Um, I think a lot of people don't understand because it is about consistency. What? Um, so before a business gets in, what is it that they need to really think about? Yeah. Well, number one, uh, you got to think about, have you ever gotten a result for a client or a customer? And when I say a result, if someone comes in, for example, for they want to lose weight or they want to get abs, right? When they come in, were you able to help them make that change and they got a result and they're happy? Maybe someone comes in for coaching. Were you able to give them the, the confidence they needed to go and pitch that meeting and close the seven figure deal? Maybe someone comes in to fix their marriage with coaching, right? Were you able to make it so both parties were happy afterwards? Uh, if, if, you're, uh, if you're selling a product, you know, if somebody ordered a, a, a machine part, were you able to satisfy their needs? Now, if the answer is yes to that, if you feel confident that if somebody pays you money, then you can give them an outcome that they are very, very happy with, then absolutely, because then you'll have the confidence and you'll also have the, the confidence. Sorry, did I say confidence and confidence twice? Confidence yes, and confidence okay. in mm -hmm. order to be able to speak to the camera and convince people that you are the real deal. And that's all it takes. Because remember, businesses don't do business with businesses. Businesses, people do pe business with people. That's it. It's every yep. business has a person that makes that decision. And if you as a person can connect with that decision maker, that's all that matters. And on top of that, all you need is the right systems, the frameworks and the structures. So you know what to say, when to say it, how to say it, and also how to set up your technology around it so that it becomes super, super easy. I love what you're saying because all this while we keep talking B2B, B2C, but even with B2B, it's actually B2C because the decision maker falls down to one person, isn't it? Yeah, well, I think it's yeah. it's 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 person to person. You're always talking with a person. You're never yeah, person like, to person. Yeah, there's always a person, you know. And okay. now, now with uh, social media and video, there's 
it's becoming way, way, way more transparent. You know, people don't look at logos as much as they look at the the person being the brand. People follow, you know, like uh, you know, Elon Musk and Tesla. You know, people follow Elon Musk. They don't care yeah. if it's rockets or cars or tunnels, right? Mm -hmm. or, or, or solar panels or houses. Uh -huh. If it's Elon Musk, his brand is so strong, people will follow him. Think about Steve Jobs, you know, with Pixar, you know, with Apple, you know, with uh, Next Computer. Like everything he did turned to gold because people follow him, right? Exactly. And it's, that's how you want it to be. And uh, it used to be that, like on a TV show, if a celebrity got, you know, kicked off the show, then their career is pretty much over. Now the celebrity has a personal brand and they're paid a whole bunch to go to another show or another show. Same with YouTubers, same with Instagram stars. It's the personality is the brand. And you could take that brand all the way. Well, that's really the only thing that you can't lose until the end of your life is your name brand, your name mm -hmm. brand. And okay. like if you work for Nike and you boost their brand, great. But once you leave, you help their brand, but it's no longer your brand, right? The only brand, mm -hmm. like with any business, you know, OMG uh -huh. with you with this popcorn, you don't know if for some reason you have to shut down the company or there's a, mm -hmm. uh, a you know, a merger or an acquisition or bankruptcy. Or a divorce, because I saw that finger. No, just kidding. <laughs> this, this, yeah, <laughs> right. Um, so whatever you invest in your product or your brand, you got to understand that's temporary. But if you invest in your personal brand and people see your face and they feel like, I trust this guy, I've had success with him before, he made me feel this way before, then no matter what you start, you'll have a loyal following because people are invested in you as a brand. Okay, mm -hmm. fantastic. Now, um, you covered just, you mentioned something about you don't want to be salesy and spammy, but this mm -hmm. is something that we're seeing on LinkedIn a lot because we do LinkedIn class. And one of the things that we say is never, never, never sell to your um, contacts, you know, because we ourselves, once we connect with someone, the first thing they do is they send us a message on selling, you know, kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So um, what does this do to a person if they were to spam and send and become salesy in the long run? Doesn't it affect the brand? Absolutely. Now, okay. here's the thing. There's a right way and a wrong way to sell in personal messaging. And I can tell you right now, and, uh, with with chatting and you know i'm talking about linkedin instagram and facebook we are closing sales every single day and the difference between people who do it well and people who don't are are you constipating your your news your the message feed now i know everybody who's on linkedin and facebook has experienced this someone friends you and then you see this this paragraph and copy and paste that, it i see poop you know, S H I T poop. It's, it's constipated. It's hard. And nobody reads the whole paragraph and inside of there, there's a little thumbnail and like, watch this video and see this testimonial and click here to book in a call. And I'm like, no way. I immediately unfriend and block that person because they're not doing it right. You know that they, they crafted that message and they're pasting it to every single person. Now, the sad thing is that it still works to some degree, a very, very small degree. They make a few sales and that's why they keep doing it. But if you want to do it right, then you have to think about don't constipate. <laughs> you got to put some laxative into the system here. But <laughs> okay, let's move away from that analogy for a bit. But how? But we love we, it. We, we, it makes we, we, sense. We, yeah, we use it a lot, Ken. We even yeah, like I mean, is very constipated usually. But never mind. Yeah. We'll talk about that later. Okay, <laughs> <Yeah. go on. laughs> so the, the thing is, you have to see how are people actually using Messenger when they text their friends, when they text their parents, or their you know, family, right? So we studied these speech patterns. When I say speech patterns is how can you talk to someone as if you already have the rapport? And I call this the smooth segue. It's a combination of uh, a framework and scripts. And if you build out a big flow chart of how to take someone from being cold and not knowing anything about you to actively engaging with you, and then you qualifying if they're a likely customer and then inviting them to purchase your product. Now, there's a specific flow. There's three things you gotta look for. There's slopes, there's traffic signals, and then there's red pill, blue pill. And uh, this is actually something I teach in my course. And uh, just yesterday, we got four sales. And uh, wow. you know, it's a $3,000 program, but no ads. People watch the video, they engage with the video, we have a conversation with them, and they decide whether or not they wanna buy from me. No phone call, no webinar, nothing. 
shoot a video, make a sale. And that is what I show people how to do. When when you're when you're in that 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 quadrant, which is the C quadrant, which I'll just bring up here for just a second. Yeah, because we've got shot to yeah, memory. Right? Let's, let's, let's do that. Right again. up there. If it. you're in this zone, then what you need to do is learn how to make videos that get engagement. Okay. And the engagement turns to a conversation. And the conversation turns to a sale. Okay. So look here. Number one, the key points you got to look at is, is uh, here, needs education and is high priced. If you qualify for these two things, then you absolutely need to understand how to build a video funnel for yourself. And the video funnels don't require any technology, no website, no email, no landing page, no tripwire, no, no subscription to ClickFunnels or, or whatever platform is popular this month. Uh, mm -hmm. It's just get on social media, make videos, and then make sales. Wow. Okay. Go back to the basics, right? Okay. Um, since we are talking about this, um, just to share with the audience, let us know what you think. We are going to be, um, we've got, um, we've got something on offer for you. Um, just for you guys, Ken is going to be doing a free video marketing masterclass within two weeks. So if you guys are interested in that, please comment, um, in the comment section and we'll send you the links to sign up. Uh, moving to our next question, um, why, why is this happening? Is it because he, the sales process has changed or what's happening? Because there seems to be a shift. In the olden days, it was hard sell, right? Now, mm -hmm. it's softer selling or what do you call it? <laughs> you know, when, when people used to show up to these live events and the, the speaker gets on there, he's, he says something great. And then, and then he, his job is to make you feel like shit. And then, and then show you that there's a solution if you don't want to keep feeling like shit by my program. And that is how it used to work until the speaker started realizing that every, no, if he closes 5% of the audience, he's happy, right? A thousand people, that's 50, 50 sales. He's like, great, maybe 5,000 bucks a pop. So he's just made, you know, $25,000, like wonderful, right? Actually, no, 250,000. It's a lot. So he's happy, right? And then the, the organizer gets half of it. He gets half of it. But what's happened recently is everybody that shows up there has a phone and everybody who's got a phone can tweet that this guy's an asshole, you know, like, or, or, or go to his straight to his Google site and put a one star review, go to his Facebook page, put a one star review. And when those speakers are realizing that the other 95% of the audience is going to completely destroy their brand, people start realizing, holy crap, I have to actually be nice to people. I have to be okay. nice to everybody. Because otherwise, okay. you know, if there's a thousand people in the room, I'm going to get 950, potentially 950 negative reviews. And the next time I try to book a, a speaking gig, there's a good chance the organizer is going to check you out and say, what's with the, you know, the 950 negative reviews. And there's a good chance your brand is just going to tank. So because of that, people started becoming aware that actually it pays to be nice to everybody. It pays to not be an asshole and only be nice to your customers. So I think that's the biggest shift. Mm -hmm. Everybody has the power to review and leave a comment and uh, and give you a one star if they feel like it or a five star. I think, if they feel uh, like it. I think just to add to that, not only that the audience can tweet about it, uh, I'm seeing some of these audiences who attended the session. We actually came up with a video to talk about the speakers and all that, right? So it's like reputation, credibility just go, uh, go down. Um, so how do we do this then? Look, do what? How, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, I, as you notice, I love drawing on my, you, you can leave this yeah. here like this. Okay. Yeah. But uh, and I'll hide my face because that's Oh, I love time. inverted triangles. Good. So the traditional funnel, most people, you know, I, I just want to see in the chat and you guys could put it in there too. When we look at this zone right here, what are words that come to your mind? What kind of technology goes there? What comes to your mind? Uh, Shari, I mean, Maybe landing page, right? Maybe. Are, are you guys still there? Did I lose everybody? No, no, no. Hold on. Okay. Hold on. Yeah, yeah. I, I know here. you guys understand marketing. So, what yeah. kind of things, what words come to your mind when you think of this very, very top tier? Websites. Okay. Website. Yep. What else? Yeah. Funnel pages, I would Website, say. Website, funnel. Page. Videos. Okay. Mm -hmm. What about here? 
So they just click and then that, yeah, then there's always a free course, right? <laughs> free course, okay. Um, yeah, sometimes yeah. it goes yeah. to a website for more information, a landing page maybe. Webinar. Yeah. Okay. Free webinars. And how about here? Then they will offer. Somebody will call. Somebody call. Calls. Offer. Okay. Yeah. Now we could go on and on with these details, but mm -hmm. most uh, marketers, when they're asked, okay, so how do we do video marketing? Then what they say is, look, here's the thing. We got to build a funnel, and at the bottom of the funnel, you go and we make some money. But before we do that, we got to build this funnel, and then what we're going to do is we're going to shoot some video, and these videos, we're going to insert them into each of these steps of the funnel, and the purpose of that is to drive more people down to get more profits, and the more videos that we make and the more videos we insert, the more engagement there will be and the more people we drive down the funnel. Does that sound familiar to you? It does, absolutely. So what you're saying is that we're not doing a salesy video, but we're doing a video which is kind of like content where we're giving value to our audience and it kind of drives them down the funnel. Without well, I'm, getting, I'm getting there in just a second. Not exactly. <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> no okay. problem, no problem. So you can leave this up here because I love seeing your faces. So, I don't, okay. I don't <laughs> so the, the idea here that most people say is, you know, put more videos into your funnel, right? Mm -hmm. And that works. But here's the thing. What I know is that people who live in this zone right here, right, who are in the B zone, let me just erase that so you can see that again. If you're speakers and you're networkers and you work, work on inspiration and you're an extrovert, then when you think about building all this stuff out, this, how does that make you feel when you have to build all this in order to make some money? That's so most people feel like they'd rather go get their teeth pulled, right? Yeah. Yes. They'd rather shave work. their poodle. They'd rather yeah. clip their toenails <laughs> than build all this out. So mm -hmm. what I sh want to show you is that you don't need to build this complicated thing. What you want to do instead and this is this is the game changer, guys. This is it. I'm about to show you. Stop okay. putting videos into your funnel. You want to put the entire funnel into your video. Okay? Uh, put okay. the funnel into your video. Look at every stage of your video. And this is actually what the master class is about. So I'm not going to give away the farm right here because I actually want you to show up because it takes it takes a little bit of time to unwrap this and unpack it. But mm -hmm. if you look at this here, then all of this represents what happens inside of each video all the way from the moment they see the video appear on your newsfeed, right? To getting them to watch till the end, to doing a compelling offer, to closing off and signing off, and then actually making money without ever leaving the social media platform, without ever having to build a website, without ever having to get on a sales call. This is 100% possible. There's just two things you need. Video, camera, which is, by the way, these, these little dots, I know people make fun of them. That's all you need, okay? and a social wow. media account. OK. And you can start that's making like, money. That's, that's it. That's so very simple. And OK, and this is what you're covering in the free masterclass, right? Exactly. OK, cool. Mm -hmm. um, that is happening on Tuesday. What was the date again, I'm in? OK, I'm going to put it up on the banner. Uh, 14? Yeah. And we'll put the yeah. link. Uh, Pauline, can you put up the link in the comment section? So it's happening the on up. the 14th. The link is up. OK, 14th of July, Tuesday at 8 PM which is 9 p.m. Japanese time. So, you know, <laughs> just for Ken, the rest of you, 8 p.m., okay? Sounds good. Yeah, so basically what I'll cover in there is how this funnel works, how to, how to structure each of your videos to be its own funnel, and how do you get people to actually hand over their credit card information without you pitching a sale in the video. Now, here's a problem about pitching in a video. Even if you do it well, even if you're not douchey, even if, if, you, if you do it perfectly, people don't share videos where you pitch, even if they enjoyed it. Like if someone pitched to me, I'm thinking, oh yeah, I'd really like that training, which is $5,000 and I could probably you know, learn these things that will improve my business in these ways. I don't share that around because once you share a video that has a pitch in it, then I have this little pit in my stomach that feels like, oh, I wonder if uh, you know, Amin's gonna think I'm trying to pitch him and I, if I get a commission, right? Or like all that baggage that comes with it. So. The important thing you got to realize with video marketing is this, the, the message where you ask for a sale, which is important, by the way, and the message where you actually give people value 
they have to be completely different videos. They can't be in the same one or they have to be different platforms even mm -hmm. because here's the thing. I think it's happened to everybody and just, just nod your head if this has happened to you is uh, you watch a video and you're promised some amazing value and you start watching it and it's starting to go really good. But somewhere around the, let's say like, you know, the three quarter mark, it starts morphing into a sale and you start having this like, oh, I got tricked into a sales video. Yes. Like, oh, yeah. I just yeah. wasted all this time. Oh, they're not going to give me the, what they said they're going to give me. And now it's, they're just going to sell. Right. Mm -hmm. So you might be able to trick someone once, maybe twice to watch a video where you trick them into a sales environment. But after the third time, they will ban you. Every time they see your face, they will flee for the hills. Yep. What you want is the opposite. Every time they see your face, you want to give people a knee jerk reaction to want to watch that video. Click, watch, click, watch. You post, they click, they watch. And if you can do that over and over, then uh, you've reached drug dealer status. Whoa, no, okay, I like that. You have addicted that. customers, okay? okay? I totally want to get there. They pay you with their time three minutes, five minutes, you pay them with a dopamine hit. That's releasing drugs into their bloodstream, makes them addicted yeah. to your face. And that's what you want. You got to be I like the drug dealer on the corner. Oh, yeah. I love I, that. I, I've always wanted yeah, to be I a drug that. dealer, but, but like a halal one, if you know what I mean. Yeah. You know, yeah. like yeah. a legal one. I have a one. question though. I have yes. a question. Um, now it seems like a lot of the examples that we're giving is basically applying to coaches, consultant, trainers, right? The gurus and all that. Mm -hmm. But what if, I own a, a a swimming school, or yep. I, or a I bank. I'm doing or a, a yeah or a bank with a new product. If I, mm -hmm. Yeah, if I'm a if I'm a green sustainable living carpenter, so yes. what do I do then? How do I so, do, how do I create this kind of video? You know, I'm I'm just gonna give away one of the big secrets here, but right. in any, I think that you still fall under this category here, right? Where it's gonna require it it. It needs some education and it's a high high price product, right? Or service. Am I right? Yep. So if you're in that category, and I didn't I can't write down every single industry, but if you want to charge a premium price, that means a little bit higher than than the industry average because you're better. <laughs> and you and in order for people to pay that kind of money, you need to educate them. Then the main thing you gotta do is figure out. Okay, okay you want to write this down, okay? If what I'm about to say here, this changed my life and this will absolutely change you how everything you think about creating content and, and finding solutions for people is number one is uh, you want to demonstrate that you know how, but don't give them the know how. <laughs> know how, but know ah, how. Okay, 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 okay. And now number two, if you can Pauline, articulate. Uh, hang on, Pauline, type this out, okay? <laughs> okay, number two. No. Number two is the person that can articulate your problem better than you can for yourself automatically earns the right to charge a premium to implement the solution. Wow. Okay, what does that mean? A example, simplify it. Okay, That's so a lot of times people in business are stuck, right? Like I'm mm -hmm. working so hard, I hired all these team members for my, for my uh, school and we're, our revenue is amazing, but the profits are less. We're actually making less money. I'm frustrated, but I'm working harder, harder, harder. I'm frustrated, I don't know what to do, right? And they just keep, they have this loop going on and they're stuck there. If you can walk into their business or into their newsfeed and say, you know what, isn't it frustrating that when you have the highest revenue ever and everybody is happy, you know, everything looks good on the charts, but when you check your bank account, you're, you're taking a lot less money than you used to when you had lower revenue and you can't figure out where the leaks are. How frustrating is that? What if I told you that there's just three things, three numbers you need to look at. And if I show you how to move the needle on these three numbers, you can absolutely transform all that revenue to the exact same proportionate amount of profit. Would you be interested in finding that solution? Now, I've identified that person's problem and articulated it to them better than they could for themselves. And if, if, and also I, I don't know the industry very well, but if it's within the industry and they know, they understand that you understand their problem better than they do, then you have earned the right to charge a premium to implement the solution. So who are they going to pay to help them solve that problem? The person who understands it best. Right. Of mm. course. Definitely. Right. So thank you. Your, your job when you make video content is not necessarily solving the problems. It's not entertaining them, even though that can be included, but it's understanding them better than they understand themselves. And the moment they recognize that, you know, 
what you're talking about better than they know what they're talking about, then they're going to come to you with credit card in hand saying, where can I buy your course? How can I get you to help me? I get people all the time asking me without me ever pitching. Hey, Ken, do you have a course? Hey, Ken, do you coach? Hey, Ken, can you make videos for me? And if you go through my, my, my newsfeed, you know, go check out Ken Okazaki on uh, LinkedIn or on Facebook or on Instagram. There is no pitching yet. I have mm -hmm. inbound leads coming in. So just take that with a grain of salt. The person who can articulate your problem better than you can for yourself earns the right to charge a premium to implement the solution. That is a game changer. All right. Thank you so much. Okay. Thanks. Now talking, going back to video, um, I used to be in production. So when we do films, there's usually a structure, um, like save the cat. It's the same film. It's slightly different. Same, same, you know? Um, and when you follow the structure, the outcome of the film is the best. When it comes to video marketing, would you say yep. it's the same thing? It's, it's you know, there there's definitely a structure and a framework, and I cover that inside of the the master class, which I highly encourage you to show up to. But let's okay. just show you. I want to show you real quick right here. Mm -hmm. This is the second stage of the video funnel right here. Okay. Okay. Uh, actually, let me use another color here, right here. And this is all about the structure, right? What's the number mm -hmm. one, two? three, four, and what are the five elements and what order do you need to say them in to get people hooked in at the beginning and get them to watch till the end. And that end bit has to connect to this part of the diagram, the next stage. Okay. So this second stage is all about video structure. Now, when it comes to performing, then here's the thing. A lot of people think that a teleprompter is what they need. They need to type out the script. I think teleprompters are a terrible idea unless you're reporting the news, okay? Mm -hmm. Where you have to say everything exactly the right way. And by the way, it's much, much harder to present to a teleprompter than to present to a camera. And uh, that's the mistake a lot of beginners make. They think it's easier because they don't have to memorize all their words. Don't do it. Don't do it. You don't need a mm -hmm. teleprompter. What you need is a framework. And mm -hmm. with the right framework, you can perform really naturally. You can perform in such a way so that people get hooked in at the beginning. You're going to put a hole in their mind that can only be filled by watching the video to the end. And then they're also going to walk away with a micro commitment. So they know exactly what to do next. That's not going to cost them their email address or uh, you know anything weird at all. It's going to feel really natural and something that happens just inside the social media platform that helps them feel like they're moving forward with you. OK, great. Uh, talking about being natural, um, one of the hardest things, um, I don't know about you, but for people here when we work with them is talking to camera because it's scary. And you're right, talking to a teleprompter is one of the worst things you could do, but everybody seems to think it's a solution. So how? what would be your best advice to get people comfortable and not as constipated on camera? Like Amin's constipated. So what would be your advice? Do you have a magic trick up your sleeve? Yeah. I mean, are you this sitting on the toilet right now? Because Sorry? I, yeah. that, I'm, I'm sitting, back into defense. I'm you back should be into sitting defense. because that constipation is just about to stop and it's gonna it's gonna come out. Okay, so <laughs> okay. be ready for this. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> give it to me. Come on. Give it to me. Right. So uh, look, when it comes to presenting naturally on camera, I think uh, a lot of people get stuck at their first video, and the, because the first video, no matter what, is gonna suck. Okay. What's gonna happen with your first video is you're gonna spend hours planning it, thinking about it, shooting it, and then agonizing over uploading it and agonizing over clicking, you know, upload and, and go and, you know, what publish, right? Uh -huh. And then th there's going to be two views. And those two views are going to represent, <laughs> number one, the one that you watch to check to see if it uploaded properly. And the yes. second view is going to be when you check back in tomorrow to see if anybody watched it. Right, OK. <laughs> but that first video is still necessary. Because if you're old enough to remember when cars all had stick shifts, right? What's it first still gear does. for? First gear is only to start the car barely moving, getting a little bit of momentum. Maybe get out of the driveway. But you'd be crazy to think that you could cruise along the highway in first gear, right? Your first video is like first gear. Just get out of the driveway. Just get that inertia going because that's a heavy car. And if it's used to sitting on the driveway, then it's going to take effort to move. But it's still necessary. Is it the finished product? No, but you got to do it. Now, what I recommend is don't focus on your first video because that's hard and it's going to look like shit and it's not going to do well. Focus on 100. How fast can you get to your 100th video? 
And I have a hashtag, hashtag race to 100. Because if you focus on how fast can you get to 100, by 100, you will be a proficient producer. You have gotten real feedback from your audience. You're going to know what works, what doesn't, what people respond to, what's old and dead and stale. You're going to know. You're going to find your personality. You're going to find your voice. Race okay. to 100. Got it. I'm not going Wait to give you some, some motivational fluff or some technical jargon because all that technical stuff is just more clutter that's going to stop you from making your first video. So you're going to think, oh, I need another technique, another strategy. Um, make your first one. And then you do want a basic framework. And you don't want a script because writing a script is going to take longer than shooting the video itself, right? You don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. You just need a simple framework and then pick any topic and you can share about that. Uh, that's what I recommend. I love the comment. Get it? I mean, okay. Um, I love that. I absolutely Wait, hold on. agree with you. Hold on. Pauline, I'm doing it already. Where is your video? Oh, oh. somebody's ass got worked. Okay. Oh, um, Ken, <laughs> Ken, I do have one question. Amin has done more than one video. I think this is our 17th episode. Um, <laughs> he's still somewhat constipated. Is there any word of advice you can give to him? Just a short one. You know, the, the most important thing is focusing on what's going to get engagement. You okay. know, views are important. And, but the most important thing is, can you get people to comment below and get people to share your video? And if you could get that done, then you have virality. Okay. okay? Now, mm -hmm. there's a lot of ways to do it. Um, someone just asked me just this morning, I had a coaching session inside of my, my coaching course, which, which is, uh, uh, it's a six week program that I do to show people how to build this funnel. Uh, but uh, somebody asked like, how do I come up with more content? And I said, I said, how about this? Why don't you make a video this morning and just go live and say, Hey, by the way, what kind of content do you guys want? Do you guys want more uh, how to content or do you want more of my uh, motivational uh, inspirational stuff? She got 72 people in one hour to comment below about what kind of comment the content they want from her. Now that's engagement. Yeah, now, here's the, here's really the interesting good. thing about engagement. Engagement means that, you know, if on LinkedIn, right? Let's go back to the analogy of the constipated block of text that comes in where people are pitching you unsolicited. Now, one of the reasons why you don't like it is because it's unsolicited. You didn't ask them, hey, could you send me some information about your program? I'd like to see it. They give it to you without you asking, right? And that for that reason, it feels like they're intruding in your personal space. You don't like it. Mm -hmm. But if someone says to you, like, let's say I, uh, you you made that video, says, hey, by the way, what kind of content do you want to see from me? Do you want to see more motivational stuff or how-to stuff? And if you commented, oh, I want to see some more how-to stuff, and then I write back to you and I say, hey, Nina, thanks so much for the comment about wanting to see more how-to stuff. Uh, by the way, personal question, how's your business going lately? You know, And all of a sudden, you initiated that conversation, not me. Therefore, I'm not invading your personal space. You reach out to me by commenting on my video, and I'm simply responding to that. And that is the secret to how you can start a conversation without being intrusive. Okay, that, that's fantastic. So, okay, I'm sorry. I'll get off your back now. I mean, with you being constipated. Um, but it's about engagement. <laughs> it, it all came out. Okay. It came out. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, um, I do have hey, another question. Yeah. It, um, uh, you, you would, we're sorry? running out of time, right? Okay, how important is it to be a likable? What's the most important thing in a video? Is it authenticity or is it you being really real and confident that you know what you're selling? You know, it depends on your audience. You know, the word authentic is used too much. It's mm -hmm. overused and uh, it's, it's kind of been twisted and, and perverted a little bit. But look, uh, What's important is that people know, like, and trust you. And that's a really old term. You know, if, if you draw a Venn, then, uh, you know, know and like is, let me just find a blank page here. Mm -hmm. Getting there. So the way I look at it is uh, if we have no like, and trust, then over here, uh, we have no like, trust, right? Mm -hmm. And if someone knows and likes you, then they're like a fan. And a fan likes the idea of you, but they don't trust you necessarily because they don't know you as a person. They know you as a concept, right? Now, if someone knows and trusts you, we call this family, right? And you know where they live. You can, if, if they do something bad, you can find them, but you don't necessarily like them because you didn't get to choose your family, right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> but you could probably co-sign a bank account. You can probably lend them the keys to your house 
or they'll watch your, they'll feed your fish for you or, or, or uh -huh. walk your dog, right? You trust them, yes, but you yes, don't yes. necessarily like them, right? Yeah, it's now, like Simon like, Cowell, I guess, right? It's a great example. There you go. Like and trust, this is gonna be your goldfish. They have no idea your name, your birthday. They, they never sent you a card, but they like and trust you because literally you're the one that feeds them. And if you don't feed them, then they die, right? So why don't why you think about when you make video is you don't want fans because fans like the idea of you. They'll casually watch, but they won't really buy because they don't trust you, or at least they won't buy a high ticket. You don't want family. Uh, in the beginning, they are a confidence boost, but they're but they will never buy from you, right? <laughs> Am I right? <laughs> and you don't want goldfish because they're just gonna hang on to you for life, and that's all they have. What you want is a buyer, and a buyer has to actually tick off all of these marks. They have to know you. They have to know like what are your likes and dislikes. They have to like you, and the way you know they like you is if they're binge watching your video content, and they have to mm -hmm. trust you. And trust comes from vulnerability. Okay, what are you it. willing to share about yourself that's not necessarily a mask you know what's your real self and if you can tick off all three of these then you have the winning combination and you will get sales you need to find the buyer no like and trust not family not fans not goldfish does that make sense to you mm, perfect i think i know why i think amin's constipated sorry amin <laughs> It goes back to you. Um, mm. um, because um, in your trainings, I mean, you exude that trust amazingly somehow on camera, maybe because we don't give you enough airtime because you're doing the things in the back. So I guess we need to see you more. Okay. Um, hokey Puck titles, which goes into one of the questions that people are asking. How important are intros? Could you give examples of a great intro? You know, here's a number here. One of my favorite numbers in the world. 69,000. Now, uh -huh. the reason this number is important, you know what it re re represents? No. No. Number, number of 69, views? 69,000 is the number of social media screens on average that you're going to scroll through every single year on your phone. Wow. OK. okay? Uh -huh. Now, this is the best guess. Nobody has the definitive answer. There's so many platforms, and there's so many screen sizes. But on average, 69,000 is the number of screens we scroll through every single year. Now, if you think about that, and your video showing up on someone's feed, these guys are speeding through. Yeah. If you want to get people to stop long enough for your video to autoplay, you need a killer title, and it needs to be designed in such a way that catches their eye. Now, if you think about it, what's the first part of your video that comes on the screen is the top bar on your video. And it comes up from the bottom, so it's on the screen for the longest, and it's also the first thing they see. Mm -hmm. Now, here's the other thing you got to think about is um, if people, no, let's say that you've got a video and you can cure coronavirus right now you can cure cancer stop global warming you know stop all inequality in the world you know get north korea to you know to finally be you know normal all right okay mm. let's say you have these solutions in a video but here's the, the truth if your title is not compelling enough to get people to stop scrolling for your video to start auto playing which is 1.5 seconds right now if your title is not good enough your video is worthless it's worth zero it, you might as well have not made it because on social media, now YouTube is a little bit different, but LinkedIn and Facebook, that top title has to be so good that people are going to stop their speed scrolling through 69,000 pages and the title will get them stopped long enough. Then you get your first words in. And that first part of the, the what you say in there is so important. You got three seconds to hook their attention and I actually show how to do that inside the masterclass, which I'm going to do in two weeks from now. So I really recommend you show up. But okay, uh, cool. think about that. Your video is worthless. You might be able to yep. stop global warming with your video, yep. but if you don't okay. have a good title, it's worthless. Okay, yeah. so you need a compelling title um, that will and get people to watch There's a specific system your... and a process on how to mm -hmm. write those titles because okay. the title needs to get written even before the content. Yes, exactly, definitely. Okay. And you also yeah. need to know By where to way, look. Uh, yeah. Go ahead. I, um, we are running out of time. Just, just want to check. Uh, how, how much more time do we have with you, Ken? You know. <laughs> I can hang out here for longer. I don't have another appointment right after this, but I just need to know. Um, I just want to see the comments. How, if there's enough people actually tuning in and engaging, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. just type yes if you want me to keep going. If I get enough yeses, I'll keep going. If 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 this was boring and everybody logged off, then I'll log off too. <laughs> That's <laughs> quick. Type yes. Okay. 
Give that, yeah, yes. let us know. Type yes in the comment section. Um, in the meantime, I'll ask the next question. You have this sure. thing called 52 and 2. Mm -hmm. That's like, fifth, let me get this right, 52 professional videos tuned for engagement and retention where you actually shoot your client's content, 52 videos for the whole year done in two days. Yes. My so response to that is like, what? Is that even possible? So I'm seeing enough yeses, I think. OK. OK, I think we're good. Oh, good. I'm going to we're watching yeah. or not. Thanks, guys. Okay. I'm going to do some call outs here. Uh, wow, it's going so fast. No. OK. Yes. A Facebook user, Nur, Kareel, Shirin, Kelvin, uh, Arthur, Kelvin. Thanks, guys. Appreciate the, the support. Uh, thanks for your participation. So uh, the question about 52 and 2. Um, you know, a lot of these uh, social media stars and people uh, you know, people I mentioned before, big teeth, big hands, you know, 10x, those kind of people, they're busy, right? Uh -huh. And they don't have time to go do a fancy production over and over every single week, every single day. Some of them do. But what I provide is a service for people who are really crushing it, and they want to crush it even more. And they have a proven system. And what I say is, look, what if, and here, again, I, I love this analogy is, what if you had a personal trainer? And I mean, I'm going to ask you this, okay? Real question, okay? If you had a personal trainer and you really trusted him and he said, you know what I mean? What if we work out two days a year? And you're like, what, two days a year? And in oh, those two days a year, I'm going to make sure you have a six pack abs, OK? <laughs> and but the, for those two days, there's a bit of preparation, OK? I'm gonna, you have to do a bit of homework. There's some preparation. But those two days, I'm going to be your personal trainer. I'm going to be your drill sergeant. I'm going to make you work so hard. but. After those days are over, for the rest of the year, you don't have to work out anymore, and your abs are going to look really tight. Would you go for it? Yes. Hell yeah, I would. Right? <laughs> yes. So, That's why yeah. I even talk about, I mean, I'll do it. <laughs> there we go. I want to see your abs. So that's what I would like to show it, but it's OK. OK. <laughs> <laughs> so we actually work with our clients, these, these high-level clients. They What they have is they've got very little time, and they want very premium quality. So we we do a lot of preparation. We do research in the market. What kind of content does their audience want? What type of structure does the content need to be in? And then we spend two days and shoot 52 videos. That's uh, that's and that's enough for three videos per week for the entire year. What that means is these videos are also repurposed. Okay, we shoot a longer video and it gets cut for Instagram, for Facebook, for YouTube, for IGTV, for uh, for everything. For and. Uh, in two days, they have an entire year's worth of professionally produced content, and uh, that's that is something that uh, recently we've we scaled it back a little bit because my my flight teams can't fly around so much. But mm -hmm. we do it, uh, yeah. That we still do have quite a few people in it, and uh, it's something that uh, actually really revolutionized video production for a lot of videographers. They never realized that was possible. Now I've got a lot of copycats trying to do the same thing. But I'm the original. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. OK, so I think um, we, we, we're already opening up the market here a little bit. This will be a fantastic opportunity for our CEO clients, right, Amin? So we definitely yeah. want to work with you on that. So if you guys yeah. are interested, please message us. You know where, uh, where we are at. Um, but I guess for the ones who are just starting, this will be like at a later stage that they should just come for the master class first, right? I think everybody should come to the master class first, and then you're mm -hmm. going to understand. Like, even if you do choose to do 50 to 2 and 2 with me, mm -hmm. then you got to think about, you know, like, for example, if you order rocket fuel, right? And this is the same rocket fuel that Elon Musk to, uses to go up into space all the time. Now, if I show up at your door with, you know, with a truck full of rocket fuel, can you use it? No. Right, because you don't have the machine with which to fuel it. So the important part with fifty-two and two is: do you have a proven selling method online? If you do, amazing. That's the machine. The machine is built, and I bring that rocket fuel in. We're good to go. Now I've had the mis I've made the mistake in the past, and this is me again being really honest, really honest. And mm -hmm. this is not an ad, but I had the mistake of people thinking it's a silver bullet. They they have a bit of money. And they think that if they work with me and get these videos done, then all the marketing is going to be taken care of. It's not. You need to have a machine already. That's why I say people who are already crushing it and they want to crush it even more, that's what that's for. It's done for you. And uh, it it's not super cheap, but it is the world's best when it comes to this category. Now, yep. uh, what I do inside of uh, the master class that I'm going to show you is actually show you how to build that machine. Yes. 
Okay. That you Sounds pour fantastic. that fuel into. Yeah. Okay. So wait, I'm excited. Wait, um, yeah. Yeah. I, I actually on. have a question. Okay. So because I just saw, saw Shireen posting uh, that she has little time to produce video. That's what she said. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she wants, but she still wants premium video. Uh, would that be addressed in the masterclass somewhat? Or do, because Absolutely. I noticed that I think after the masterclass, yeah. uh, what I'll do is I'll say, look, whoever's interested in actually getting this done and you you have actually sold some some units of your, your program, or your product online, then let's have a conversation and see if we're a good fit. You know, I actually still, here, here's the difference. People who take my coaching course, uh, I coach people through building this machine. It's called the video funnel, right? And uh, I think that uh, once you know, like I work with them, but I don't actually go fly to their doorstep and do all this work for them. So I'm okay with people not having a personal interview with me and we can, uh, you know, work that way. But if I'm going to hire crew members and fly out or have them fly there, then I actually need to have a personal interview to really make sure that it's going to be worth it for both of us. So yeah, I do require that we have a phone call. So if, if someone's interested in that program, then we can have a personal phone call and we'll see if it's a good fit. Okay, I think for that, the next step would be sign up for the free masterclass happening on Tuesday, 14th July, 8 p.m. The link is already up in the comment section. Um, make sure you guys go, even if you want to do the 52 in two days, because they'll give you a yeah. very basic understanding of what's happening. We are signing up. Kelvin, by the way, he is the godfather, not grandfather, okay? But we expect <laughs> grandfather. to see you. You yes. know, fun <laughs> fact, my oldest son is 22 years old, so... I may be a grandfather soon. Who knows? <laughs> well, 22. Wow. Okay. I mean, whatever he's on, we need to get on it. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> okay, oh, cool. Cheryl just signed up, by the way. Yes. Congratulations, Cheryl. Congratulations, Cheryl. So Looking forward to we'll seeing you there. Okay, right. cool. Now, we're going to go into the rapid fire right now, um, where yep. it's a series of questions where we ask you and you don't think much and you just answer it. Are you okay. ready, Ken? Tough. Yeah. You're going to try to trick me into something, right? All right, I'm ready. I hope not. We'll see. Oh, the first one would be, are you single? Obviously not, because we heard the answer. <laughs> well, maybe I no, I'm not. I'm happily married. My wife is from France, and uh, we have six children together. Okay, wow. okay. And you guys wow. choose to live in Japan. I'm Japanese. Of course I'm in Japan. Well, you could have lived in France, right? <laughs> oh, if that is that what you mean? Yeah. Um, France doesn't have enough cameras. <laughs> That that is true. That's a good one. That's a good one. Yeah. That's a good okay. one. Yeah, you know, there's just never enough cameras to make me happy in life. So that you know, it's gotta be Japan. Okay. okay, cool. Um, do you have a lot of clients in Malaysia? Uh, I have a few and uh I, I, I think one of your most famous there's one, one that is you Peng might recognize. His name is Peng Jun. Uh, yes. he kind of is famous in that arena. Um a few others. Uh I'm not sure if you'll know them necessarily. But uh, I have somebody who's in banking, uh, who owns a, mm. uh, a bank investment trust fund. Uh, another mm. person who is, uh, oh, I've got a, a, a corporate trainer who works with Unilever, uh, mm -hmm. who's a client of mine. I've got a client who is, and by the way, I'm not mentioning their names because uh, by default, I don't use my clients as my selling uh, ace because it's a, it's a private type of uh, arrangement and some of them might prefer not to be named. Um, mm -hmm. But I can't, I can't say what they do. One person who's a, a mutual trust fund manager in Malaysia oh, okay. and uh, another person who has a, a whole bunch of real estate holdings in commercial real estate in downtown KL. Uh, wow, okay. with skyscrapers. So what he does, his kind of content is really for his board members, for his, you know, multi seven million multi seven figure investment type of personality. So we make videos that are really just aimed at people who are willing to invest, you know, $10 million plus into his investments. So they don't really go public on social media. But yeah, mm -hmm. we did 52 and two with the, um, you know, group of private clients. Okay, got that. Um, Ken, um, I think next time you come over to Malaysia, let us know we could actually do a talk. Yeah. Yes. And yes. I need Malaysian food. Oh, I heard, I heard, uh, but it gets you fat though. It gets us fat. That's why I just have to save it for when I visit, right? Mm -hmm. Again, <laughs> you wanted to show a YouTube video. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay. I mean, uh, yeah, do you want to show it now um, or later? You want to tell the story first or you want me to show the video? Let me just explain real quick about this, okay? And then I'll, I'll, we'll end with the video. Um, look, a lot of people come into, uh, you know, 
start a business because they want to make an impact, right? And you know, for me, impact is really about how much of your program or your service can, or your product can you sell? Because if you really believe in what you're doing, the more you sell, the more impact you're having. And that is, uh, you know, that's when you align your purpose and your your money. And that's when you're really going to be successful. But then there's also the other kind of impact where you're not making money. For example, people who really need help. Now, um, I'm just going to show a quick video. I mean, you could put that on in just a sec. Sure. And uh, it's going to show really the kind of impact that's possible, even if you're not trying to make money. And I'll, I'll, I'll give a bit of an explanation afterwards, too. OK, let me try it. I'll show the video, yeah? I still have questions after this, just so you know. <laughs> Sound. Sorry, hold on for a while. Yeah, hold on for a while. I'm going to stop again. Please excuse my tech guy. Huh? He's new <laughs> and constipated. <laughs> OK, let's start again. And here you go. My name is Rubina Okazaki, and I live in Tokyo. I am 12 years old, and my 13th birthday wish is to visit my grandmother, who lives in the Philippines. Less than a month ago, my grandmother was visiting us in Japan. I found out that the typhoon Yolanda hit the Philippines where she lives and killed over 5,000 people with thousands more still missing. Right now, there are millions of people who still don't have clean water, food, or even house to sleep in. My grandma, Mammy Abby, is a member of Rise Above Cebu Foundation, and now they're helping with the relief effort. They are focusing their time on Malapascua Island where so far they're the only organization who is helping the people living there. So here's the part where I'm going to ask you to get involved. My goal is to raise $5,000 to fund a trip for me to go to Cebu and join my grandma to help the typhoon victims. How will the money be spent? Less than $1,000 will be used for my airplane ticket and other expenses like food and stuff. The rest of the money will be donated directly to the foundation to buy food and supplies for the typhoon victims. It's amazing we can buy with so little money in the Philippines. For example, $1,200 can build a small house for a family that lost theirs in the typhoon. $250 can buy a small banca boat, which is an important means of transportation for many locals. You might be wondering, so why don't I just send all the money there instead of going myself? I think that by getting involved, I would be a super help to my grandma and the typhoon victims. And it would be a really cool experience for me. Will you help me get to the Philippines and rebuild the homes and lives of the families who lost everything? I sure hope you will. And I sure hope that we can make this happen before the new year. Thank you very much. All right, we can cut it there. So yeah. just to give some context, uh, this was done after the typhoon, and I, I'm not sure you guys were probably affected by that, right? This is like seven not, years. not as much, not, not as, as much. much. Yeah. But, um, after that video went out, we put it up into a crowdsourcing site called Indiegogo, and yeah. uh, we got about eight thousand dollars within a couple of days, and wow. that actually inspired her to actually we I, I went with her and we went straight to this disaster zone, and mm -hmm. we actually walked among the rubble and we found five families that. Uh, that she chose herself with the money that was raised from strangers and uh, were able to find contractors to rebuild their homes. Now, when this started, she actually asked me, hey, dad, can I borrow $1,000? And I said, why do you want $1,000? And she said, well, uh, you know, grandma says that for $1,000, he could rebuild someone's house. And then I, what I told her is, look, instead of, uh, instead of me lending you $1,000, how about I give you nothing? And then she was kind of offended. And I said, well, what we're gonna do is we're gonna have total strangers to give 5,000 instead of me giving you 1,000. And she didn't really believe me. We we made the video together, I put it online. And uh, after that, you know, we made way more than she expected and she was super surprised. So look, here's the thing. Video marketing is not necessarily about making yourself rich, but if you have a purpose and you understand the, the power of video marketing, even a simple project like that, I wanted to inspire my kids that if you have the will to do it and the skills and frameworks to execute it, that's all you need. You can make anything happen. If you have a vision to build a school or a foundation, mm -hmm. this is the key that's going to be closing the gap between where you are and where you want to be. It's a super powerful tool. 
That's fantastic. I wish we were yeah. ending off with that, but I still have questions because I want to edit it later. <laughs> Rock okay. music. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, but thank you. I mean, that's why we do what we do because we want to see more stories coming from Malaysia, you know, with mm -hmm. with real heartwarming stories. So thank you. That's such a fantastic example. Um, I know somebody who wants to build a mosque somewhere, so I'll send mm -hmm. that part of the video to him and I'll get him to come for the class as well. Um, we're doing the rapid fire. So um, Ken, very quickly, what are the top three reasons any businesses should do video? Top three. Number one, um, gosh, any top three reasons. Okay, I'm not supposed to think about this, right? There's just yeah. so many. I don't know where to start. Number one, do you want to be feature proof? If the answer is yes, you need to do it. Number two, mm -hmm. uh, if you're going to do any type of advertising, video has a higher reach than everything else. Number three is because if, if you want to reach a million people, having a million conversations, is a lot harder than shooting one video that gets a million views. Mm. OK, sounds good. Fantastic. So let's say I'm a business owner and I've decided to do videos. What are the top three things I can do right now to help kickstart my journey? Uh, step one is reach into your pocket and see if you have a phone. If that's check, that's step one, right? Step two is get into the free master class. Because honestly, you can shoot, you know, you can have a lot of motivation, but if the strategy is wrong, you'll just be looking for the sunset, but running west. You know, I mean, looking for the sunrise, running west. It, it'll never happen, right? And yep. number three is, uh, you know, I think ask yourself why it's important. Why is it even important for you to be in business? Why is it important for you to sell anything? Because a lot of times it's going to feel like hard work, and you're also going to get some, you know, people who don't like your videos. It's just a matter of time before that happens. And if you are connected to your purpose, then that's going to take you through no matter what. I love that. Thank you so much. Now, if I'm already starting to create video, what are the minimum gadgets that I need to invest in? Because I'm in here has this thing called um, Gila Gadget Syndrome, which in Malay hmm. means he buys all the gadgets in the world. Hmm. So what, uh, what, what would be the basic minimum? Look, if you've phone. got a phone, <laughs> that is less than four years old, that's everything you need to get started. Now, I, here's here's something really important to think about is the first question I get from a lot of people is uh, what camera should I get? What light should I buy? What microphone? And those are important questions, but it's just in the wrong order. Here's the thing. If you have not yet used either your phone or your webcam to tell a compelling story and make money, you don't deserve to be buying yourself gadgets yet. Because what's happening is the fact that you haven't made money with it yet, haven't made business with it yet, tells me that it's an avoidance strategy. You are feeling a little bit guilty that you didn't do something. And then you go log into YouTube and see somebody else with fancy gear and fancy cameras. And then you think, oh, they're successful and they've got that gear. Therefore, if I go shop for that gear, I will have the same success. Wrong. Most likely they bought that gear after they had some success using what they already had in their pocket. So here's the thing. If you want to buy gadgets, go, go to Amazon or Lazada or wh whatever you use. Write a shopping list of everything you want, right? And I could give you a list of what I use if you like. Let's say it's $3,000. Then commit to go earning $3,000 using your phone or your webcam and then go buy the gear. Never, ever, ever buy gear to make money. Make money to buy gear. You got to get okay. that in your head. Make okay. money to buy gear. Don't buy gear to make money. Period. Oh, okay. It's got it. There you go. It's a, your there your you mind, go. I mean, sometimes is probably thinking, you you got to move forward. You got to do something. You got to invest something. You, you want that momentum feeling. Therefore, you uh -huh. go buy things because that's easier than actually doing the work of of creating content and selling. No, okay. you know the, the other thing that I found out after buying stuff, actually, it's as simple as it can be. You don't really need all the equipment, actually. Yeah. 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 So at the end of the day, I still use my make phone. Make money to buy gear. Don't buy gear. Okay. To yeah, exactly. Thank exactly. you. Thank you, Ken. Um, this is really, really good. Okay. Um, what do you think is the secret sauce to an engaging video? Is it the speaker, you know, talking from the heart? Why do people watch? If there was that one thing that people can take home. It's with. the person that can, I, that can uh, explain or that can identify the frustration of the viewer better than anybody else or better than they can for themselves. That's it. Okay. Plain and simple. It's the most, I mean, there's other things, but if we're talking about video marketing and selling uh, a high priced 
service or program that requires some education, then the person that can identify and explain the problem better than the viewer can for themselves earns the right to charge a premium for implementing the solution. Also for view for keeping the viewer on. That's it. Wow. It, it's not uh, eloquence. It's you understand them. Okay, got it. So it's not eloquence. It's about knowing how to explain the problem better than the person uh, exactly. understands it. Okay. If you had one advice to give businesses out there uh, with respect to running a business or you know creating content during these challenging times, what would it be? Just one advice. Yeah, that's that's a really good question, and it's because recently it's changed for me. You know, oh, uh, I'm, I'm okay. inside of a mastermind where I'm paying you know over five thousand dollars a month just to be a member, and it's a five year commitment. I'm in another mastermind where we're paying about two thousand dollars a month, and within these networks, I've seen a huge shift. It used to be you know build your team, build your your program, and market it right, and it's about mm -hmm. leadership. But right now, mm -hmm. the shift among the people who are doing you know, one to $10 million. And a lot of my colleagues are doing $50 million a year just by selling coaching, right? And by the way, coaching is a big deal. If you know how to get someone a result, then you should be a coach. <laughs> but, wow, Pauline, um, you hear that not? <laughs> but here's the thing. The one advice that I have is collaboration. Who can you help that can help you back without having to transfer too much money back and forth? Because the value you give people with just time is so much more than the money they're willing to invest with you in a lot. So you find somebody else who has the value that you need. Maybe somebody who builds funnels, maybe someone who knows email marketing, maybe somebody who has a large audience, you know, maybe somebody who, who has a software solution that you need. Find that person and then figure out by understanding their frustrations, how you can help them. And then you will be, you will accumulate so much value that has a real price dollar on it that people, other people pay for, but you can get way more if you understand how to fulfill their value better. Okay. That's my advice. I think that's a really and good And it's advice. so easy nowadays. People are willing to get on zoom calls so quickly because it's, yeah. it's just so quick. You know, yep. everybody's accustomed to it. Everybody's been trained. Yep. Okay. So it's one hour, 33 minutes and 33 seconds. Time to stop. <laughs> <laughs> One, right. two, three, two, three. Okay, so um, we do have, uh, for people tuning in, we have an amazing surprise for you. We have something special for the Popcorn community. Ken yep. is going to be doing a free video marketing masterclass happening on Tuesday, 14th July, right? Um, so make sure you guys are there. Sign up at the link. Pauline is going to put it up. Um, and last question, Ken, uh, what's the future for you apart from this? Uh, video marketing masterclass that we're seeing you at. <laughs> so, What's your plan in the future? You look different you know, there. Yeah, I, that's before I. That's that's right before I took the the health challenge. Ooh, okay. Ooh, and okay. I also grew my goatee. I'm not sure why. <laughs> <laughs> um, so here's here's what's going on. Is uh, you know, my agency has worked really well for some time, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but there's been so many people who ask me to help them who simply can't afford that price. Mm -hmm. And what I'm doing is actually I'm taking all the systems in my agency, basically how to hire virtual assistants in low cost countries, very high skilled, but low cost, mm -hmm. how to create a system so that you can have an entire media machine in house instead of hiring agencies. When people hire agencies, there's a lot of friction. Systems are good. That's the, that's the plus point. But the down point is it's expensive and agencies by design can't be too flexible. Otherwise they can't manage a lot of clients, right? They have to have their structure and their system. And that's how my agency is. We're pretty strict. We're like, this is the way it works. If you want in, you buy into our system. And th that's that, right? And most people go for it. But what if you could have, for a very low cost, a, your own media machine where they plan your content for you, right? Where they actually are going to do the market research for you, where you're, I'm going to give you video trainings on how to train them and hire them, how to price it, also how and trainings for them on how to take your videos, repurpose into email content, uh, blog posts, uh, websites, uh, Instagram, you know, IGTV, TikTok, everything. How to take that content and put it everywhere so that you're omnipresent. So this is a, a coaching program I'm building right now so that even a one-man team will become a two-man team, but that second person will be running an entire media agency, but within your company for a client of one, and that's you. Uh, wow, that sounds really good. I want to sign up for that one. Pauline, take note. <laughs> <laughs> Pauline holds the money. 
kind of thing. Need permission, kind of thing. Okay, so thank you so much, Ken. We are excited. Yeah, we want to like learn that. more about it once you launch it, right? People in PopCon, you want to hear from Ken, right? Uh, in the meantime, remember, sign up for the class that's happening on Tuesday, 14th July, right? Uh, mm -hmm. At 8 p.m. Okay, I'm yeah. afraid that's all the time we have for today. But if I were to summarize from today's episode is you can start making videos just with your phone and nothing else. And how do you do that? Just come for Ken's class and we'll sort you out. Um, also, one of the, the secret sauce to making a video that converts is basically being able to articulate the problem of your clients better than they can, right? That's right, 100%. So, I actually have a good memory. Cool. Right. Thank you so much for um, such an insightful session, Ken. We love you. Can we give Ken a round of applause? Do we have sound? No, we don't have that. Though. We can just do this. <laughs> yeah, we love Ken. We have to go manual. This, by the way, yeah. we call a seal of approval. Ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> kind of thing, right? Hey, can I just do say one last thing? Yes. Um, please sign up. But also, if you know somebody else who's in business, and you know that if they just understood a bit more about video marketing, if they mm -hmm we're able to just take a couple strategies and use them from this free training then share this with them because you're not this is not just for you or for me or for nina or amian it's for them how's it going to affect their family their children their employees through this difficult time because mm -hmm. if their business is being affected by covid which everybody is then this might be what they need to survive and you'd be doing them a huge favor by inviting them to the free class and i'm not this is free by the way so do them a favor share this link around get people in okay i've got a limit of 100 seats that's that's the limit otherwise i can't manage more than that so mm -hmm. it is officially closed out 100 so it, the faster you okay. get it to them the better and yep. uh send them the invitation yep so please make sure yep. use the link spread it out um you have our fullest permission because we want everybody to be successful okay and come yep. up bigger and better and stronger than ever because malaysia boleh <laughs> right all right yeah all right. Okay. So okay, um, before we go, um, Amin, do you want to talk about what's happening next week? Yes. Uh, next week, we have AJ Wilcox coming yeah, in. Yeah. Right? Another so, international speaker uh, who will be tuning in live all the way from the States, Colorado, right? Yeah. yeah and I have, uh, matching, and, uh, I have matching hair as him. I'm a ginger. Hmm. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. So and the a, week after? A, the week after is uh, so uh, let's talk about AJ first. What is, what is he okay. going to be talking about? He's going to be talking about LinkedIn ads, right? Mm -hmm. And how the B two B advertisers uh, can actually uh, utilize LinkedIn as a way for you to maybe generate more views, right? Mm -hmm. So that's AJ Wilcox. Then the following af week after that, we have the CEO who started the podcast. I'm gonna yes. right? Okay. So He's actually for the CEO those of you, of digital solutions, and his podcast is called Tech This Way. Okay, so if you guys yeah. want to tune in about podcasts and stuff like that, that is the episode you want to watch. In the meantime, mm -hmm. uh, don't forget, we, we have um, Kent's class coming up. Make sure you sign up. And we're yeah. also going to put this video on YouTube, right? I mean, on our social yeah. media YouTube channel called Popcorn Fest. In fact, if you love this video, give us a thumbs up and follow us on all our social media, Popcorn Fest on LinkedIn um on instagram on twitter on telegram and stuff like that okay give yeah. us a like and have, tell us what kind of content in TikTok you yeah yes 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 right. uh, i mean there's no content but you know we just choke the name haha <laughs> okay yeah Sounds there good? is content you have never seen oh that. there is how come i don't <laughs> yes. know about this okay because i've been managing it you know <laughs> excuse me hey, i see okay, everyone you've already signed up can i just shout out a few names yes yeah sure thank sure. you kelvin harith var i can't read this email uh fiona MM99 USA. <laughs> wow. Janerai Rizal. Share. Oh, that's media. Shirley, Andreas, Akmal, Zuraida, mm -hmm. maybe mm -hmm. Kevin, Pauline. Mm -hmm. Guys, thank you so much. Can't wait to Me see. Me and you. Amin is also going. We just haven't signed up, kind of thing. Okay, perfect. All okay. right. That's it. All right. Thank you so much, Ken. Thank you so much, Ken. All right. Bye. Yeah, we'll see you. Bye. Okay, we'll see you on we'll Tuesday. You. Okay. Thank bye. you. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Bye. Bye. I think you're supposed to put the idol up. Uh. Uh.